Hello everyone, Nisha Menon here, Director of Nikasu Foods and Founder of Jack and Chill. So, welcome to another video of Business Learnings. Today, what I'm going to tell you about, I'm going to talk to you about the mistakes that I've made in my business. Obviously, this is not a very comfortable topic for me to talk to you about because it's mistakes, you know. You shouldn't think that you're going to avoid these mistakes, but you have to be brave enough to accept them and learn from it. It's not easy. It's really, really hard. If you haven't yet subscribed to my channel, please make sure you subscribe to it and hit the notification button so you don't miss out on any future videos I upload. Mistake number one, trying to sell too many products. As an entrepreneur or as a business person or as a salesperson as well, you would be tempted to sell all the products that comes your way, you know, or people request you to do as well. Or if you are a manufacturer, you will be very tempted to do or to manufacture all the products that your customers ask you to do. We have two brands, as I always say, we've got uh, Nikasu and we've got Jack and Chills. For Nikasu, we manufacture Indian frozen food products. We used to have a huge portfolio of around 100 products in our uh, Nikasu range. So basically our customers or our distributors used to come and ask for these products and we used to make it for them. So what are the issues that you face there? So let's start from the manufacturing side itself. Your productivity gets affected there because suppose you're making only coconut you know you're planning your production of coconut in a day then your productivity will be high your efficiency will be high there compared to making three or four items or three or four skews in one day so that is the production side let's take the packaging side and you want to make these uh, you know 25 or 50 different items so you have to make the packaging for all these 50 or 100 items you have to design the uh, branding for all those products so printing cost will be high your packaging cost will be high what happens if the product doesn't sell well you will end up with these packaging in your factory or in your premises there so it just keeps piling up there so that's the packaging side after that let's say you are shipping so it comes in the container and you'll have around like 50 items in the container it comes to the port so your charges vary at the port as well depending on how many different items you have also if it's a food product you have to get it nutritional information tested in the lab so that will be an added expense Suppose after the clearance and everything, it comes to your warehouse. So they'll have to keep create different product codes for all these items, then palletize it accordingly. Even if it's only one carton of, let's say, banana chips on a pallet, you get charged for a pallet. So may as well keep it less number. They like it if it's only four or five items in a container so that it can makes your life easier as well. Now, put yourself in a customer's shoes. Suppose you go to a supermarket and you just want to buy some basic item, let's say coffee. And this is a real life example, I'm going to say, you know, so you go to the supermarket and you want, want to buy just coffee for your family. You go to the supermarket aisle and you'll see that there are different kind of coffee brands there. You've got Nescafe, Kenko, Lavaza, Starbucks, and then you've got the supermarket own brand as well. In the coffee, you've got instant coffee and the normal coffee where you put in the machine and the coffee granules, you know, those will be the two different types again. Again, you've got different strength of coffee. You'll have smooth, rich, gold, decaf, latte. And latte has like skinny latte, caramel latte, vanilla latte. Then you've got cappuccino, you've got americano, you've got espresso. You've got these different kind of varieties which you have in the supermarket shelves. So what happens is when you see too many items on the supermarket shelves, your brain gets overwhelmed and is not able to make a choice. It's not able to make the right decision there you get very confused there. So what I would suggest you to do is look at what your best selling items are and you know maybe around the, the top 10 items of your products. Just stick to those items and see what are your least selling items. Just take it off your list. Now let's move on to mistake number two which is learn to say no because when you start your business you really want to sell as many products as possible and you really want as many customers as possible every single customer you think will place an order with you you know so you in the hopes of that you will be very tempted to say yes to every single inquiry you have but we have to keep a limit to all those and then start saying no to customers 
which you feel are not viable for your business example i still have people coming and ask me can i uh, you know can you make parathas for us because this brand does the parathas for us it was not viable because the costings and everything was not working well so we we did not we decided not to go ahead with that same with the shopkeepers or the other customers who comes and ask you okay i just want to place an order for one carton and then i'll say try and see what it goes so i say see it's a frozen food product so it's very expensive the transport and the delivery cost are really expensive i cannot afford to just send you one carton so you can either do one thing you can come and collect it from our warehouse or you can go to the distributor and you can buy it from there because for me selling one carton of a frozen food product is not viable i have to sell it as pallet loads so even to the distributor i say this will be the minimum volume that you have to place an order with us you have to see what is viable for you and then accordingly you have to plan the orders and your customers mistake number 3 is giving credit to all your customers because when you are in business customers come and ask you for credit it can be 30 day 60 day 90 day credit or it can be a one in one out as as well if you have a food business you know the shopkeepers the restaurants you know most of them they ask you for credit they will not pay you upfront as well so you should not be too tempted to take all your customers on board you have to see what the type of customer is is it viable for me to give them a credit and then you have to decide accordingly i have come across a few bad customers i would say in my uh, 12 years of business so what i have learned from that is you have to do your research because there was this one customer especially who you know he invited us home and we had an amazing lunch and this was in the initial days uh, had an amazing lunch they had he had his porsche car and bentley car parked outside his house so trying to impress us showing you all those things and uh, he placed an order with us so he said okay when your next order comes i'll pay for the previous one so that is how we do with our existing customers sometimes so and then he placed a few orders with us it was all going fine after a year or so slowly the delay started coming up he said oh the products are not selling well so i just need the other product from you so can you send me this and this order so i sent the other order as well because he has been with us for a, over a year slowly he started avoiding my calls no text no emails no phone calls nothing there was no answer or no response from him whatsoever finally i decided i have to go to a debt collecting agency who will help me in recollecting the money back uh, you know from that customer so what the debt collecting agency what they found out was that company had filed for bankruptcy so if you file as for bankruptcy in uk then you cannot get your money back from them the lesson that i learned from there was you should not give credit to everyone after that we stopped giving credit to everyone unless and until they are a very big customer of course who is well known distributor or well known supermarket like suppose as the tesco sains is how whoever comes on so you have to do your research before you found out your customer and give them a credit as part of your research you could go and find out on google you could search about them on company's house you could search when were they registered what is their turnover because you go to company's house and you'll get all these details or you can see what was their latest um, accounts filed you go to their website you can search them on linkedin facebook uh, instagram you've got all this uh, social media these days you can find out their customers and even speak to their customers and find out what their experiences then when you are giving your goods you know you have to find out you have to think about what is the value of the goods for you worst case scenario if he is not going to pay me how much will i be affected so i should give start off with small orders and then build up as you build the relationship or the trust again another thing is how far is he located from you is he outside the uk is he in europe is he an international customer if at all anything comes can i go to him you know can i chase up the money or can i send somebody if you're going for a debt collecting agency so these are the kind of things that you need to keep in mind before you finalize your customer whether you have to give the credit or not come to mistake number 4 which is registering your trademark so basically what you have to do is you have to register your brand company name logo and even the tagline of your business on the ipo website i leave the link of the ipo website in the description below for nikasu what had happened was um, i did not trademark the company on on ipo website which is intellectual property office and after a couple of years one one day you know i came to know from my customer that my competitor had trademarked my logo and my company name under their name so which means 
my identity has been taken over by them so which means i cannot sell the goods it doesn't nikasu doesn't belong to me it belongs to my competitor so it was a huge huge news that came on to us and then we had to immediately change the logo overnight and that's how we created this new logo so that's when i learned you have to trademark your logo on an image and uh, even the brand the company name so even before you decide your company name you can go to the trademarking website the ipo website and search by image or by the wordings there and even for your tagline you know is there anybody else who's existing on the uh, ipo website under the same name and is there a company who has the same name as well so you can see if at all there are any other companies similar to your name you can always see are they under the same category if at all you have any doubt you can always uh, contact these ipo trademark officers so as i said i leave the link to the ipo website below so you can have a look at it now mistake number 5 is you have to learn to handle and get over the rejections i know rejection is one thing that we all dread in our life even if you are in sales or even if you are in business or just normal life you don't like getting rejected so but when you run a business rejection will be part and parcel of your entrepreneurial life there is no way you're going to escape from rejections so what you have to learn is you have to learn to face those rejections and bounce back from that and i used to be very very upset i would say still also i get upset when i get rejections but not as much as how i used to be resilience is what i have learned in all these years it's something that makes you capable of getting back when i used to start a business i used to go to these small shops and then and try and sell my products and people used to say i don't have any freezer space in my shop that was enough for me to be upset i used to sit there worrying for weeks maybe and then you start getting more and more rejections and you feel this is nothing so you you start facing these rejections and you feel okay so if he said that what will i learn from that and how can i face the next person from rejection so you start learning from those rejections or those mistakes and then you try and come out of it or you bounce back from it and you come to your next customer and you know how to defend those questions you know one specific quote which i like is fail which is f a i l is the first attempt in learning will always come across rejections or failures but if you take it as a learning your first attempt in learning it should be only your first attempt it shouldn't be your second third fourth attempt you know so it if you learn something from it then it's worth it now the last and the final mistake i would say is working alone i was not comfortable in delegating as and i think that and that will be the case when everybody starts their business because you don't want to delegate everything to everyone because first of all it's your baby and you don't trust everyone that they would do the work as good as you and then secondly you might not have enough funding to take on another person fully on board as well you if you are a founder of the business or if you are running the business by yourself everything is on your head you wear multiple caps you know you wear different roles everywhere but slowly what i learned was you cannot do as your business grows you cannot do everything by yourself so what you have to look is what are your strengths and what are the things that you really enjoy doing for me sales and marketing i love doing that i love negotiation so these kind of things i know i want to do it myself and for selling my products there will be nobody else who's passionate than me so that is something which i want to do and i enjoy doing and something which i wanted to delegate was maybe the bookkeeping the accounting or the finance so i thought okay i'll take an accountant for that and he does my vat return and he does my annual accounts and those kind of things he is the one who's in charge then slowly i understood if i have to do social media because for jack and chill i when i launched the brand i wanted to have a social media presence so i wanted instagram facebook and linkedin as well so i thought okay i don't want to be spending too much time on creating these post and putting up the post on social media so i just outsourced it to a social media agency that's one thing which i did as a second step as a third step again which i did was we started putting up for exhibitions then i thought i would go for an agency who where i can hire their employee have a staff on my exhibition stand and then i started using them i start uh, selling it in the shops and then you have to go and do these samplings at the uh, shops as well or in store sampling it's called so see what you are enjoying the most and see what are the things that you do not enjoy or which you are a bit weak in and then try 
and outsource it. One place which I have used for outsourcing small services is called Fiverr. I'll again leave the link in the description below for the website. There you've got these uh, uh, small sellers from around the world actually who provides different services. If you want to go for any branding services, if you want to create a flyer or if you want to create a banner or if you want to create any restaurant menu or anything like that, you know. So there are several people who sell it starts from $5 and it can go up to even 100, 200, 500 pounds or $500 as well. So it depends on the type of service you take there because that will be a kind of uh, place where you can go for outsourcing for a uh, affordable price, especially when you are beginning with so that's it for today thanks once again for watching and make sure you share this video to anyone whom you feel would benefit and you can help them in avoiding these mistakes or learn from these mistakes see you soon in my next video until then bye bye